right, in the last one, we talked a lot about the component life cycle. In this one, we're actually going to do a practical example of something you might use in a component, and that is a simple timer, something that's counting up for us. Now, we could have it count down too. That's completely up to you, but we're just going to have it count up. And we're going to do it using the concepts that we just covered in the life cycle. And if you didn't watch that video, that's okay. This is still going to be fairly useful for you. Now, of course, we have this basic component and it is in our app.js. So we are rendering it and this is it, right? So the first thing that I could do is say something like const count equals to one, right? And then I can bring that in and just, you know, something like that. So I want that number to continue to go up maybe every second or every whatever interval you want, right? So I want that count to go up every second. How do I actually do that? Well, the first thing that I want to do is use our count based off of a state, right? Because this timer is going to change constantly. So what does that imply? That implies that our state is changing constantly. So I want to make sure that I set my default state. I did set a default number, but I did not set a default state. And since I'm using a default state, I want to have my constructor being created first, right? So constructor, whenever you want to default, this is what you do. And all I'm going to say is this dot state equals to count and well, the initial state should be zero, right? So you start your count at zero. And then now in my render method, I can just use this mapping, this dot state, and that will allow that to happen, right? So it actually constructs this and it's going to have a default state of zero. Hopefully none of this stuff is really new to you at this point. The next thing is once this render happens, we have something called component did mount method already being called, right? So if I write this here, it's being called. And what that means is that it's going to do something in here and then it's going to run render all over again, right? So it's going to execute that same render method. It's not going to run a new one. So it's going to execute the old one. Okay. So we've got our component did mount here, and this is where I want to increment my count. So something like this dot set state and using parentheses, braces or curly brackets and we just do count and then I'll just do this dot state dot count plus one. Okay. So component in mount. What should I see? What should this number look like? It's not counting yet. It looks like one, not that complicated. Okay. So JavaScript has a couple methods that are built into JavaScript. One of them is called um, set interval interval and the other one is called clear interval okay so in our component in mount method we want to set the initial interval not in our constructor but in our component in mount because when we want to do actions that's when you'll use component in mount the default values is when you'll use your constructor so although set interval, that is going to have to happen at some point, right? Like I still want it to seemingly happen instantaneously. That's where component to mount comes in. You want to do it there, not in your constructor. So when you have actions happen, component to mount is a great place for it. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and say this dot my interval equals to set interval. And I can actually use my handler, right? So like, as you're seeing, I've got my handler here and then I have a timeout number, right? So this is giving me some suggestions on that, but I can use a fat arrow method or arrow method and set it something like this and then do whatever count that I want to have. So let's say a thousand. So I want to actually set the state to a thousand. Okay, so in here, this is where I'm going to do it. I'm going to set my state to move up by one. Okay, now this is actually allowing that interval to work using that fed arrow. I don't actually have an event that's passing through here. I don't really need one, but my set state, I can actually take this a little bit further and use my previous state and use that as a fat arrow 
to grab my previous state related items and just do previous state dot count plus one instead. So you can use this dot state dot count like I did, or you can use previous state dot count. So I just showed you two different ways on how you can go about doing that. Okay, so now that we save it, I can refresh and what do you know? It's counting. So the last piece of this would be to update this component when it leaves or really handle when it's unmounted. So all you do now is component will unmount. You want to clear out that interval and you just do clear interval and whatever the interval is. In this case, I just initialize it and set it right there. So that would actually clear the interval for you. That is a built-in JavaScript method, so you don't have to worry about writing it. It's there, it works. We save it, and all of that does is clear the interval so it's not having any memory leaks or anything like that. So like in some cases, you might have this timer show up, and then you might wanna get rid of it, right? So this will allow you to get rid of it in a very efficient method. So, so this is a practical example of using the lifecycle in a component and also shows you how to build a timer. So if you do have questions on this, please let me know. Um, obviously, something we did talk about is you could make it go down. So if I wanted to go down, let's say you had 100 seconds, you could actually do that with this, right? So there we go. I just now reversed that direction. Very, very simple. Um, of course, I could have different methods, like I could put other methods in here on how you want that direction to go. You could really sort of advance this if you'd like, or you could set the initial value based off of a property. So that is something that you might end up doing. So how would I actually set this based off of a property? So I do have my initial state. So in the constructor, I, I, I'm gonna leave it in here as one, for example. And I do wanna have my initial state count based off of my property, but yet, this is going off of something different. So I'm, I'm actually not gonna worry about this yet. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And what I'll do is I'll say let, or rather const um, start count equals to this.props.count, whatever that is. And we'll just do this.setState count equals to that start count. Let's make it a little bit more React-like and just do this.props. Okay, so right now I don't actually have that as a property method, so I'm probably getting errors and it doesn't appear that I am. Let's save it and refresh in there. And yes, so I'm getting an error because we don't have initial prop for that start count. So in my app.js, I just do start count and say, I don't know, let's say 100 or a thousand, whatever. So I put that number in, a thousand, 99, there we go. Now it's working. So lifecycle stuff, maybe a little complicated to some degree in the sense that when do you actually do stuff like this and when do you do stuff like that? It's all about that initial value. So with your component, you want it to load up very quickly and then you want to render the things you need to render. So you're gonna have it load and render the initial state, whatever that's gonna be, and then you will actually change that state after it's been mounted already. After that has been mounted, then you wanna run through that initial state. And notice that this interval doesn't actually change until I call it, right? And then it will continue to change because of how we created this method, right? I could have this in a separate method itself. So do interval, changing or whatever and literally call this all over again and say this dot do interval change just like that and if i really wanted to bind it we could say equals to just like that so that would bind it then so i could call it from a button and then it would just recount okay cool so there it is life cycle with a timer. And now it's a very practical example, hands-on thing and something you would probably use somewhere in your app sometime. Because oftentimes you need to count stuff. Sometimes you need to time out things. You know, if somebody's filling out a form and they're taking too long, boom, this is a way to time it out 
and then send them elsewhere. Send them on their way, and this is an efficient way to do it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to get everything. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on React. If you have questions or comments and you want me to see me build something more in React, let me know in this video. Obviously, I cover a lot of other coding tutorials, so happy to hear what else you want to see. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.